This is your reminder that the BBC has yet to address the consistent transphobic leanings in its news coverage. And while the team behind Doctor Who is not connected to this in any way, since this is a BBC-owned property, I'm going to keep pointing it out until the problem gets resolved. Links in a pinned comment below if you don't know what I'm talking about. I'll stop saying it when it stops being a problem. Hey folks, I was originally going to say what I'm going to say now as part of my review of the most recent episode of Doctor Who 73 Yards, except that review already was running uh, decently long and I really wanted to um, kind of give this thought some breathing room, which is, uh, you know, eight episodes. It's not enough. It's not enough for Doctor Who especially. And I honestly question whether it's enough in general. It's rapidly becoming a standard season length. And I'm not going to say that there's no seasons. uh, There's no shows who benefit from that episode length. I think some probably do. Some probably nail it. But uh, I'm not loving it becoming standard. And I am going to mostly relate this to Doctor Who. But I kind of feel that in general. Eight episodes is honestly, maybe, potentially... Ideal for a serialized season, a continuous story over that many episodes, you know, between 45 minutes to an hour. I think eight episodes, that should allow you to tell most single season stories. But if it's not serialized, that might not be enough. Now, that might seem weird. Like, if you're not telling a continuous story, what do you need more time for? Well... To create a status quo, to create a sense of normality. So to zero in on Doctor Who, at time of recording, we are halfway through the season. We've had four episodes so far, and I would only call the first one anything close to a normal episode of Doctor Who. Space Babies, love it or hate it, I think is very much a normal Doctor Who episode. Whether you like it or not, it is. The Doctor and Companion show up on a space station. There's people who need help and a monster. They deal with that. That is a standard Doctor Who episode. Since then, we haven't really had one. Devil's Chord, on paper, maybe isn't that odd. Historical setting, important historical figures, otherworldly being is causing havoc, needs to be dealt with so that time happens as it's supposed to. That sounds standard Doctor Who, except the character of Maestro is so very much an extreme that it is not Doctor Who standard, um, just by virtue of Jinx Monsoon's performance and the nature of that character. That is not typical. Now, again, story structure, maybe, but like in terms of the nature of the feel and the energy and the villain especially, no, that's not that's not standard. And then boom, no monster, really. A doctor can't move and is stuck on a landmine. How do we get him off? That's the whole episode. That's not a standard episode. And then 73 Yards is a Doctor Light episode, which is already a non-standard episode. And even as a Doctor Light episode where the Doctor barely appears and it focuses on the companion, even by that metric, that episode is weird as hell. I loved it, but it's not normal. It's not standard. Current era Doctor Who doesn't have a normal. Why does that matter? Well, partially for the sake of contrast. Because the episodes that are exceptions, that are something really different in terms of concept, execution, casting, whatever it might be, those things need something to contrast against. Because if there's no standard, then the exceptional is definitionally less exceptional. And when everyone's super, (laughs) no one will be. The term filler episode has kind of become a dirty word in the uh, environment we now exist in. And I get why. 
Because filler, especially in, I, I would say, in the age of streaming, and even before that, the age of DVD home sets, filler was the stuff you skipped to get to your favorite episodes, unless you were a completionist who watched every episode start to finish when you when you went back and revisited things. You know, filler like, oh, yeah, this episode's fine. It's fine, but no, let's get to the next one. So, like, I get why there's that sense that filler's a bad thing. But filler creates the rhythm and the the normal, the status quo that the exceptional stands out against. I know it might sound weird that I'm kind of advocating we need a higher episode account, um, a higher episode count so we can have more bog standard episodes. That might sound really weird. But the reason is when all you have is the high points, well, I say high points, when all you have are attempts at the exceptional, again, whether or not they are a high point for you, that'll vary by taste. I love 73 yards, not everybody did. Um, but if all you've got are the attempts to go big, and like, I appreciate this series taking big swings. I said I wanted it to take big swings. I didn't think it would take them almost every episode. That actually creates just a sense of, okay, is there a normal that these are a break from? Because right now that doesn't seem to be the case. Like, I might go back to series four, one of my favorite series of Doctor Who, and episodes like Unicorn and the Wasp are by far not the highlights of that season. But having them there, having them be the buffer or the breather makes episodes like Midnight and Silence in the Library and Force of the Dead stand out all the more. And also, I think this is going to be the death of two-part episodes. If we keep with an eight-episode season, I think only the finales are ever going to be two-parters. And so many of the best Doctor Who stories were two-part stories, and they weren't finales. The Impossible Planet and the Satan Pit. Human Nature and the Family of Blood. The Empty Child and the Doctor Dances. Heck, even some of the great quote-unquote standard episodes were two-parters. The Sontaran Stratagem and the Poison Sky. Where are we going to see these again? And like, I'm not advocating for it. Let's have a lot of mediocre Doctor Who. Standard episodes can still be fun. There are episodes that I like a lot that are pretty bog standard as far as these things go. Thin Ice, I think is a deeply underrated episode, partially because structurally, it's a very bog standard episode. I think it's one of the best made bog standard episodes, but it still ultimately is. In a way, that line that I singled out when I talked about the Devil's Chord that Ruby has, that where there's this interaction where it makes clear they've already been traveling for six months and this is only their second proper episode. Back home, what time are you? June 2024. Uh, it's hard to keep track, but yeah, I think so. June, July. We are gonna go see my mom at Christmas. Right now. Come on. I think part of why that jumped out to me was that the characters were behaving as if this situation was a break from the normal, but the show has not had the time or the room to establish what that normal is. So when Ruby says lines to the doctor, like, We've got to hide! You never hide! That is the point, I don't know. We I, always know. I don't. Those have no meaning because I haven't seen her interact with him outside of two previous episodes and only one with her actually traveling in the TARDIS, that being Space Babies. So we're lacking just them getting to exist. It's kind of like how it can also bother me in, um, it happens more in like film series or whatnot, where like the first uh, entry in the series is all about the team pulling together. And then the very next thing's like, oh, and they, they're, oh, they're falling apart. Like, oh, it's all breaking down. It's like, okay, but can we just see them be a thing? Like, I know a whole bunch of Star Trek fans love the movie Star Trek Beyond. I can't. I can't because there's a movie missing. Because that reboot franchise did two episodes, and it, it wasn't yet Star Trek outdoing the five-year mission. And after the end of the second one, Into Darkness, that's where they're going. And we start the third movie, and Kirk is already jaded. The farther out we go, the more I find myself wondering what it is we're trying to accomplish. Where's the movie where they were just on the five-year mission? 
Where's the, where's the story of them just doing the thing? Why did we jump from, we're about to go do the thing to, boy, am I tired of doing the thing. Like, where was the thing? And that's the feeling that I'm getting here. We're missing the establishment. We're missing the breathing room. We're missing just getting a sense of how these characters just are. We're getting all the exceptional moments, but they become less exceptional when there's no normal. This might be a slightly weird comparison, but there were um, some things that I, I got like, I don't know, 10 years ago that I rather liked uh, at the time, but I haven't gone back to. If you've ever heard of Two Steps From Hell, um, there's some other ones as well. Um, Future World Music, I think is the other one. They put out these albums of what are basically like trailer music, like epic trailer music. And they're good. I, I like them a lot, but I can't sit down to just listen to these albums because it's just epic track after epic track after epic track. But I can sit down and listen to the soundtrack to something like Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark or Braveheart or How to Train Your Dragon, or Star Wars, or The 13th Warrior, or all these other things that certainly have epic moments, but they have other stuff in between. You need the leveling out for the highs to actually be high. When all you've got is the big stuff, when all you've got are the exceptions, okay, they just don't stand out as much. There's nothing for them to stand out against. And I, I think this is an issue of season length. I'm not gonna say that like we th these episodes shouldn't be done they should be doing something more. no they should have more episodes so that we can get breathers in between stuff like this 10 episodes was already kind of pushing it with Whitaker's era honestly I think we need to go back to 12 or 13 like RTD had when he first did it or when Moffat was the showrunner we need room for episodes that are just a fun romp so we can get a breather between things like Boom and 73 Yards. And keep in mind, at time of recording, 73 Yards is the most recent episode. At the time you see this, Dot and Bubble will have come out. And judging by the look of it and the teaser, it actually looks really interesting, but also looks very non-standard. Honestly, from the glimpses we've gotten, the only thing that looks like it might be a standard episode is Rogue. And I'll probably appreciate it when we get there, but one standard episode? Suddenly the standard is the exception. I just think that hurts the flow and the experience of watching a season of television. Now, I'm not one of those complete nostalgic um, people who's gonna go, the way they used to do it was better. Like, look, the old model, at least in the US, of 20 to 24 episodes had its own problems because that is a big ask. That's a big ask, especially of your writer's room, but also of your cast and crew. That's a crunch. That, and you're going to end up with some stuff that is filler in the bad way. That is, we just need something this week. Somebody come up with something. But sometimes you also get the weird indulgent ideas that maybe aren't like the big swing. Oh, we're going to put everything behind this idea is like what stuff like uh, 73 Yards or Boom or The Devil's Chord felt like. But more like, who's got a wacky idea this week? Sometimes you get fun stuff that way. Or honestly, just having that pace of this is what is standard. And I think for an episodic show, you kind of need that. You need to know what these people's normal day is so that the times that it's not normal can really jump out. And I'm thinking of the fact that Shudi Gatwa in Space Babies, even though that is very much a normal episode, but like it opens with him like, why am I scared? I'm running from this thing. I don't normally do that. The question is, why did I run? I think of that and then it goes to the Devil's Court where he's immediately hiding from the thing again. We went from exception to exception. And they both get called out and they both get explanations that within their own episodes work, but we went from one instance of he just runs and he says, that's not normal for me, to another instance of he just runs and says, that's not normal for me. Okay, you say that, but we've just watched you two episodes in a row run and hide. So you can say that, but because there isn't the breather episode. There isn't the filler. There isn't something standard in between. We're in a case of show don't tell where what we're not being shown is what a normal outing is. And there is sometimes difficulty in doing something quote unquote normal. <laughs> you know, air quotes by the standards of Doctor Who, normal. <laughs> That's grading on a curve, but 
if you don't have a sense of what that is, then these moments of exception, especially when they're pushing it so hard to get new audiences in, they're not going to believe you. They'll watch the doctor run two episodes in a row. They're not going to believe him that he doesn't do that. To them, he just does. He just runs. And, like, there's nothing wrong with a Doctor Who mainly runs. Second Doctor mainly ran. And I love the second Doctor. But I can see the ways in which not having the space to just have a standard episode is kind of hurting the overall flow of the season. And it's a shame. Now, is it going to, like, wreck the season? No, I don't think so. But I feel like the season's going to be less than it could have been because, as weird as it sounds... We need more normal. Like, I love Doctor Who for its variety. I love that it can go anywhere and do anything. But if it does something really out there every time, then that becomes less special. And I, I do think this is mainly an issue for episodic television. When you're talking serialized, probably, as I said, eight episodes is probably good enough. Because I can think back to, like, say... Uh, when the Netflix standard was 13, there were definitely some seasons of television I saw on Netflix that were 13 episodes. Like, boy, it doesn't need to be, including some great ones. First season of Jessica Jones is phenomenal and probably could lose two episodes very easily and work better. So if you're going to shorten it, serialization is a better idea. But also, I don't necessarily want Doctor Who to be serialized. So we're in a situation where I just think they need more episodes. Give it two episodes more than this just so we can get a little breather, a little, oh, here, here's a standard fun romp. And now here's something a bit more outlandish. Here's a big swing. Here's a weird bottle episode. Here's this. Okay. But give us a break from that. It is a shame that every time things start to become standardized, you can see the way that it hurts the art. Because while Doctor Who... Um, in its modern incarnation has never had a standard of, you know, 20 uh, to 24 episodes per season, which was the American standard. Um, you know, I could see shows, uh, you know, it was mostly network shows, but, you know, see shows that had that many episodes be like, they don't need all these. They're, they're, ha they're being forced to make more than they should. But now we've cut it down so much. We're down to eight. I'm like, we need more. We need more for some of this stuff. And I don't know if we'll get it. Because the standards have shifted in a way that, okay, we do more money per episode to make each individual episode look better, but we're not going to do as many of them. And like, I get it from a business standpoint, but I'm not a business person. I'm an artist and I appreciate art. And while I understand the reality of business, if you're going to tell me uh, profitability or art, I'm going to say art. The art would be better with more episodes to play with. Just to give us the status quo. Because I don't know what Ruby and, and uh, this doctor's normal is. I haven't got the first clue. And I really would like to. Anyway... Like I said, this was a thought I actually had after 73 yards, which I like very much. Um, but it, it, I had too many thoughts uh, than to shove into that already long review. But what are your thoughts on this? Whatever they are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Patreon pays the bills. Enables me to do this as my living. Even if you can't help me out that way, like, share, subscribe. Those all help me out as well. Don't worry too much about it, though. What I really want you to remember is that you are beautiful. You are valid. And you are loved. You are the council. I am just running the meetings. And until next time, this council is adjourned. Now to give my thanks to my highest supporting patrons. Robin Moore, Zubin Lutfula, Radis Alida, Oliver B, Tarak, the thing that goes doink in the anime, Jean Foray, Ulrich Bogdan, Loki Eris, Melinda Walters, Jen, Auntie Kate 808, Becky Sparks, Renabi Likes the Poodle, Crazy Scrabbit, Angry Casperl, Dave Hall, White Bearish, Rosalind Bennett, Toka Blahuvian, Pal Baraba Joggle, and Mara G. Thank you so much for your support. If you can get your, your name said, maybe even correctly, 
um, in the Patreon support tier. Also, it helps me feed these little buggers. <laughs> uh.